We're gonna be completing the local tour by taking US 401. Come on, let's go! Alright everyone, today I'm gonna be redoing US Highway 401. I technically did US 401 all the way back in June of last year, but I am decided to redoing it because A, I want to show updated stuff, and B, I really want to show local stuff that you can visit if you're ever here on US Highway 401. And C, I'm showing my face this time. You did not get to see that last time. So, I'm very excited to start this video, so let's go. But first, you're watching The Dirt Pile, where I make highways content on all sorts of different topics. If you've been enjoying it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you've been really enjoying it, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you're notified on all future videos. And if you really want to help out the channel, become a member today where you get custom cool emojis, early access to future videos, along with one free extra request per month. And if you don't want to become a member, you can always just pay $3 for a intersection request in future videos. Those highways will be listed down in the description below. And I'll make sure to shout you out when that video releases. So let's get on with the highway. As you can see here, this is the map of US 401. It begins all the way down here in Sumter, South Carolina, and travels through both Carolinas, ending at Interstate 85, just half a mile away from the Virginia state line. So with that, we're gonna be talking about northbound US 401. So we begin here on Business US 76, where you have a US 401 shoot right here, turning right. And when we turn right onto that street, we now have our first reassurance shield in this cool view of Sumter, South Carolina. Here are meeting US Highway 15 for the first time, and later up the road, we're actually meeting her with it. But right now, US 401 is heading towards Darlington. On our way out of Sumter, we're meeting proper US 76 and US 378, and they're signed for Columbia and Conway. But we're still signed north for Darlington. In fact, we get one line mileage time right outside of Sumter, and we still have Darlington at 37 miles away. And then on our way toward Darlington, we actually meet Interstate 20 here. And guess what? I've actually passed by this interchange here. I was on Interstate 20 on my way back from a, a trip I took a couple weeks ago, and I actually took a picture of the US 401 in Interstate 20 Junction. And it looks like here that 401 is still signed north for Darlington, and Timminsville is for North South Carolina 403. And after passing by Interstate 20, we still get a one line mileage sign for Darlington. Honestly, now since we're closer to Darlington, I'd like to see like another town with it, like Bennettsville or Lorenburg, not just Darlington by itself, please. And then here in Darlington, we're meeting US Highway 52, and 52 and 401 have a concurrency as we head towards Bennettsville and Chirac. And here we have a mileage sign for both US 52 and US 401. Bennettsville is 28 miles away, and that's for US 401. And Chirac is 30 miles away, which is for US 52. Here are meeting US Highway 15, and US 15 and 401 have a concurrency as we head towards Bennettsville in North Carolina. Here in Society Hill, US 52 splits off from both 15 and 401, as 15 and 401 are still signed north for Bennettsville. Here in Bennettsville, we're meeting South Carolina Highway 9 and 38, and proper South Carolina 9 and 15 and 401 have a currency as we head through Bennettsville. And our next mileage sign we get Fayetteville on the bottom line. Wow, that's such a swing for South Carolina. And it's 60 miles away. That's pretty cool. And about 15 miles up the road, we're now entering into the state of North Carolina. Hope North Carolina treats US 401 well. Here, our first major interchange in South North Carolina is US 74. And it's signed for Rockingham and Lumberton and Myrtle Beach. The reason Myrtle Beach is on there is because we're also meeting US 501 here. And according to Google Maps, US 74 here is actually Interstate 74, but sadly NCDOT is not getting us actual Interstate 74 shields here. 
And here's where 15 and 501 are splitting off from the S401 as they head north towards Aberdeen and Stanford. And we're still heading north towards Fayetteville. In fact, on our next mileage time, we get Fayetteville on the bottom line at 41 miles away. That's awesome. Here in the Fayetteville area, I mean, near State 295, and it's signed north for Fort Liberty. Personally, I'm still gonna call it Fort Brad. And 401 is not signed north for Fayetteville still, because we still haven't reached downtown Fayetteville. Here in the Fayetteville area, 401 is gonna be turning into a bypass route and a business route, and we're gonna be following the business route through Fayetteville itself. Here is where North Carolina at 59 used to exist. They crossed US 401 here, but sadly it was decommissioned a couple years ago. Now we're in North Carolina 87, and US 401 Business is actually going to be joining North Carolina 87 to form a semi freeway here in Fayetteville. And then once the freeway ends, we dead end to Ramsey Street where 401 Business is going to continue left here. And then here we reunite with 401 proper, and US 401 is now going to continue north towards Lillington, Peakway, and Raleigh. Okay. Here I'm in Interstate 295 once again, and it's signed south for Fort Liberty, and north to Interstate 95 and US 13. Personally, I'd like to see a control city for 295 north, maybe something along Interstate 95 route or US 13's route. But please do not put Benson on there because Benson belongs on the state routes, not in Interstate 95. And it looks like 401 here is signed north for Wellington. Personally, I'd like to see Raleigh on there because we're only now like 50 miles away from Raleigh. And if South Carolina is signing Fayetteville from 60 miles away, then North Carolina can sign Raleigh from 50 miles away. And also this picture was taken by me when I went down to Fayetteville. And this picture was also taken by me, and we're now meeting North Carolina 217. And do you know where North Carolina 217 goes? No, not that, Irwin. North Irwin, North Carolina. It meets North Carolina 55 and US 421 in Irwin. So it's kind of like a shortcut to Irwin. And then here's another picture taken by me, and it's a mileage sign on US 401, and we have Raleigh on the bottom line at 43 miles away, which is a great choice. Here, another picture taken by me, and we're now passing over the Upper Little River. And here in Lillington, we're meeting North Carolina Highway 210, and 210 and 401 have a concurrency here as we go through town. And then now we're meeting North Carolina 27 as well. And let's see what this mileage sign looks like. Are you kidding me? Why is Raleigh an afterthought? I know that NC Dot wants to have uh, three different towns for the three different highways right now, but come on, you you can put that Raleigh with that other mileage sign. You no need it to be pull a pen dot and do an afterthought. What are you doing here? Also, this picture was also taken by me. Now we're meeting U.S. Highway 421, and 421, 401, 210, and 27 all have a concurrency here as we head towards the not so will interchange. Here we're crossing over the Cape Fear River. And now here's where all the highways split as 421 is now going to head south towards Wilmington and Dunn along with NC27 and 401 is going to head north towards Raleigh. And now let's see what this sign here says. It just basically what I was repeating, uh, 421 and 27 are going to head towards Irwin and Dunn, while 401 is going to be heading towards Raleigh. Honestly, I'm glad that they're favoring 421 south here for right lanes, because do you know where North Carolina 27 goes? I'll give you a hint, it's what Interstate 95 is signed for. I'm glad that's not mentioned here, but even though it could be, because that's where Benson belongs on state routes, not on Interstate 95. And as we're heading out of Lillington, we have another mileage sign. This time it's a palindrome mileage sign. We have Fuquay on the top line at 13 miles away and Raleigh on the bottom line at 31. Yay! And I'll actually give this a personal NC.W. 
And on our way towards Fuqua, we pass by here this giant cross, even though it's not as big as the one on Interstate 40 in Texas, or the one in Effingham, Illinois. I still think it's a pretty cool cross. Here is Piney Grove Wilbon Road, and if you're heading north on 401, this is a shortcut over to Holly Springs. If you don't want to go through town and take 55. And as we're heading into Fuqua, we actually pass by the Welcome to Wake County sign. Man, I bet it's pretty cool to live in these two houses because you have a Wake County sign here in your front yard. Now we're passing by the Welcome to Fuqua sign. And our first intersection here in Fuqua is Judd Parkway and you can take it to get to 401 North and 55 East. One of these popular spots here in Fuqua is the Fuqua Springs Park. I recommend coming here in the winter time though, or like the fall time, because the trees are very beautiful. And during the winter time, they're actually decorated to look like Christmas trees with these little cool like uh, orb looking lights. And here's a cool view of downtown Fuqua as we're about to head through downtown. And on the other side of downtown, we're meeting with North Carolina 42. And 42 and 401 have a concurrency as we head out of town. And here's a picture of Wake, Wake Chapel Road once again with the cool train tracks running through the background. Now we're meeting North Carolina 55 and 55, 401 and 42 all have a concurrency here as we're about to see. And here's the tri concurrency with this cool looking restaurant back here. Even though I have lived in Fuqua, I've never been there, because now it's a Pelicans. And if you don't know what a Pelicans is, it's a snow cone place. If you ever come to Fuqua, I ha here's one tip. Since US 401 is the major artery through town, I would not recommend driving the stretch between where it meets North Carolina Highway 55 and where both 55 and 42 leaves. The reason at rush hour. The reason is is because it's the only highway through town and there's no other way to bypass this certain area so it'd be like a traffic jam at rush hour so I advise if you want to come visit Fuqua uh, make sure to come here before r rush hour so you don't get caught in that uh, local rush uh, local traffic jam. Here on the other side of town we meet Judd Parkway once again. And as we're heading out of town, we pass by this cookout. And after after a quick stop at cookout, we have North Carolina 42 and 55 splitting off from us. As 401 is now heading north towards Raleigh. And there are no mileage signs between here and Raleigh because Raleigh's only like 13 miles away now. And as we're heading towards Raleigh, we get this very cool view of 401 here. And then between Garner and Fuqua, we actually pass by the construction of future North Carolina 540. And we also pass by Buffalo Lane's Bowling Center, so if you ever like bowling, I recommend checking this place out. Here in Garner, we're meeting US Highway 70 and North Carolina 50. And this street here is actually take, takes you over to 70 East and 50 North South because we're actually going to be morphing into US 70 West and 50 North. And as we're morphing into the highway, we have a Raleigh City Limit sign. So you can get a Raleigh City Limit sign on a US highway, but not on an interstate. Come on, NC Dot, put, a, put a, the city limit sign on an interstate, please. Here in close to downtown Raleigh, we're meeting Interstate 40 and US 64. I'm kind of glad they don't have a control city for eastbound 40 because we all know what they would put for eastbound 40 Benson and we all know how we feel about that and then shortly later up the road we're now entering into downtown Raleigh and we get this very awesome view of the Raleigh skyline seriously it's really awesome and then here's a cool view of downtown Raleigh which I've been to a few times and then once we exit downtown, we have US 70 North Carolina 50 splitting off from us. And it's signed for the RDU Airport and the Research Triangle Park. And here I'm meeting Interstate 440 and it's signed east for Rocky Mountain. 
And if you can see up ahead that US-1 is now going to be joining us and we're going to be heading towards Wake Forest and Henderson. And here's where US-1 and 401 splits off as 401 is now heading north towards Lewisburg. And US-1 is heading north towards Wake Forest and Henderson. Here I'm meeting Interstate 540 and it's signed for Rocky Mount and Wilson. Personally, since 440 was signed for Rocky Mount, I'd actually like to see Nightdale and Wilson there for 540 East. The 540 West gets good control cities for Durham, and we're still signed north for Lewisburg. On the next mileage time, we get Warrington on the bottom line at 38 miles away. That's pretty interesting. Here is, here is Lewisburg, and it has a Sheets and a Hardy's, which looks like a pretty cool place to visit. And then our next mileage time, we get Norlina on the bottom line at 23 miles away. That's the nearest town of the northern terminus of US 401. And here in Warrington, we're meeting with Business US 158, and 158 and 401 have a currency here. And now we're meeting US Highway 158 proper, and 401 and 158 have a wrong way concurrency. Here we're meeting US Highway 1 in Norlina. And it looks like that 401 is going to be joining with US 1 North, while 158 is going to be joining with US 1 South. And we also have a 2 Interstate 85 shield here, and it's signed for both directions. Yes, I know you can get to Interstate 85 in both directions, but this is kind of confusing. You can just do it either for one highway, or just do it not at all, because I actually looked it up, and it's kind of the same time to get to Interstate 85, depending on which direction you take. So just take away that Interstate 85 shield altogether. And then now we're meeting Interstate 85, and this is actually a very old picture, because that Richmond is now replaced with Petersburg, sadly. This here was a rare NC.W because they were signing Richmond on 85. And then after passing by Interstate 85, US 401 just terminates and turns into US 1, where it continues north into Virginia. So with that, we're going to be turning around and doing southbound US 401. So we begin here on Interstate 85 itself, where we have a US 401 South Shield, and it's signed for Warrington and Lewisburg. And then once we go into US 1 and 401 itself, we have a mileage sign. This one is actually for US 1, as it goes to both Norlina and Henderson. But if we continue down the road a bit, we actually have another mileage sign, and this one is actually for US 401, and it's for Warrington and Lewisburg. So that actually kind of makes sense here. This is actually a re respectable choice by NC Dot. And here's where US-401 splits off from US-1 to head south towards Warrington, and US-1 is heading south towards Henderson. And here's where US-158 turns into that business and bypass route, and we're still signed south for Warrington. In fact, we get Warrington on the top line now at 3 miles away, and Lewisburg on the bottom line at 26. Here in downtown Warrington, US 158 is going to be splitting off from us, and US 401 is heading south towards Raleigh, and this is actually the northern terminus of U North Carolina 58, so that's pretty interesting. Outside of Warrington, we have another mileage time. We get Raleigh on the bottom line at 37 miles away now, because we're closer to Lewisburg. And after passing through Lewisburg, we now get Rollsville in the top line at 13 miles away, and Raleigh at 28. Here in the Raleigh area, we meet Interstate 540 once again, and 401 is now signed south for Raleigh. And here's the road to get onto US 1 North from US 401 South, because US 401 is going to be morphing into US 1, and it's a Y junction, so you cannot get to US 1 North from 401 South. Here's the picture of US-401 morphing into US-1 as they two, these two highways continue towards downtown Raleigh. Here's where US-1 is joining with Interstate 440 and it's signed west for Sanford and east for Rocky Mount. And we're now signed south for downtown, which is a good choice. 
here in downtown Raleigh, we're meeting US Highway 70 in North Carolina 50, and we get a cool view of the Raleigh skyline once again. And here's another cool picture of downtown Raleigh. On one side of downtown, we have to meet Interstate 40, and this time we get control cities for westbound 40, which are great choices. And we also get a mention of the state's farmer's market, which is literally the next exit over from here, exit 297. Here in the Garner area, US 401 is splitting off from US 70 in North Carolina 50, and we're heading south towards Fuquay and Fayetteville. In fact, we get Fuquay on the top line at 14 miles away. What? Well, what happened to Fayetteville? Why is it replaced with Wilmington? I'm confused. For our next mileage line, we get Lillington now on the top line at 28 miles away, and Fayetteville on the bottom line at 56. Okay. So that other mileage line must have been a bit newer than this one. On our way to Fuquay, we actually passed by 540 once again. And this road here is known as Lake Rio Road. And it's not as useful as southbound as it is on northbound 401 because this road also takes you to the farmer's market. Here in Fuquay, we're meeting with North Carolina 42 and 55 once again. And it's right in front of the sheets. Here's one of my own pictures that I took a couple months ago, and it's 401 playing off from North Carolina 55. And here's where North Carolina 42 splits off from US Highway 401. Here's another picture of downtown Fuquay. I recommend visiting if you ever come down here. And then after going through Fuquay, we actually pass by the Harnett County line. In our first mileage sign in Harnett County, we get Lillington on the top line and Fayetteville on the bottom line at 38 miles away. And then here in Lillington, we actually meet the not so little interchange. And this picture was again taken by me, and we're now signed south for Fayetteville. Here's where US 421 is splitting off from US 401, and we're still signed for Fayetteville, while 421 is heading towards Sanford and Raven Rock. And again, this picture was taken by me. Now, outside of Lillington, we get Fayetteville on top line at 27 miles away, and Laurenburg at 69 miles away. <laughs> and here is a picture taken by me, 7 miles up the road, and we still have the same two control cities. Here in the Fayetteville area, we Interstate 295 once again, and 401 is still signed south for Fayetteville. Here in Fayetteville, we're meeting North Carolina 24, and 401 Business and 24 have a concurrency here. And now we're meeting North Carolina 210 once again, and 210 and 24 have a concurrency. Here we're meeting North Carolina 87, and 401 Business is going to be joining with 87 for South. And here's where US yes, 401 Business is splitting off from North Carolina 87. Here we're meeting with US 401 proper once again as after going through downtown Fayetteville. Now we're meeting Interstate 295 and it's not signed north for Fort Liberty. And we're signed south for Rayford. If we're signing Warrenburg from Wellington, why not do Warrenburg here instead of Rayford? No one's heard of Rayford. Why are you signing it, NC Dot? Ugh. And I thought that they were signing greatly for 401. But we get Warrenburg on the bottom line at 20 miles away after going through Rayford. Here in Warrenburg, we're reuniting with 15501. Here I mean US 74 once again, it just gets the same control cities. And 501 South is going to be joining with US 74 East. And after going through Laurenburg, we're now entering into the South Carolina state. And here in one of these random small towns at the border, we're now still signed south for Bennettsville. And in Bennettsville, we get another mileage sign. We get Darlington on the bottom line at 29 miles away, which is a good choice. Here's where US 52 reunites with 15401 here in Society Hill. Here's where US 15 splits off from 401 and 52, and we're still signed south for Darlington. 
here in Darlington, US-401 is splitting off from US-52 to head south towards Sumter. Here I mean Interstate 20 once again, and it's time for Florence and Columbia. And after passing by Interstate 20 once again, we get another mileage sign, and Sumter is on the bottom line at 27 miles away. CNC dot, that's how you do a three-line mileage sign. Not what you did in Wellington. Here I mean US Highway 76 proper and US 378 once again. And here I meet US Highway 15 in Sumter. And I kind of like how they did this uh, street sign here with both the US Highway and the street name. It's actually pretty cool by South Carolina. And a little bit up the road, we're now meeting US 76 business and we get a 401 ends sign here. So that's pretty cool. So we end US 401 and move on to oh, the places you'll go. The reason I say you'll go is because I've been on US 401 basically in the entire Raleigh area and I love to recommend some places that you could visit. So these are the places that you should visit in the Raleigh area off of 401. First you should recommend visiting downtown Raleigh and the History and Science Museums there. And then you should also visit downtown Fuquay because it's a pretty cool downtown and it has a cool bunch of shops that you can visit. And then you should also, like I said, visit the Fuquay Springs Park if you like foliage and winter time. And then you should also visit downtown Fayetteville and the Airborne Special Operations Museum in downtown Fayetteville. And then if you like bowling, you could visit the Buffalo Lanes off of US 401 in Garner. And then if you like shopping or restaurants or stuff like that, then you can also visit the various restaurants in both Fuquay, Garner, Raleigh, or Fayetteville. And that ends US Highway 401 Reboot. Thank y'all so much for watching this video here on US Highway 401. I hope you guys learned something new about the highway and I hope I inspired you to ever come and travel on this highway. So with that, these are my next few highways. Next week I'm going to be doing a special gimmick video where I'm going to be telling all the highways that go through each of the state's capital. And then after that, I'm going to be doing, be doing my own special version of Interstate 26. And then after that, I'm going to be doing US Highway 17 northbound. And then between 17 northbound and southbound, I'm going to be doing the US 158 reboot. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all next week.